Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be making a Kronoff style wall hanging cabinet using African mahogany, African blackwood, ebonara, and redwood. I wanted to keep a consistent reddish tone for this cabinet with the only contrasting colors coming from the door poles. This entire project ended up taking me close to about six months working on and off. Um, there's a lot to cover in this video, so let's get to it. I'll get most of the components of this cabinet from a few 10 quarter quarter cent African mahogany boards. The doors get made first. Uh, the dimension that they end up being will determine the dimension of the rest of the cabinet. Uh, the doors are also coopered, meaning that they're curved, and in this case, a convex curve. This cooper door is made from five boards glued together. Each board gets a slight angle on edge, and to establish that angle, I tilt the fence on my jointer and join each board to that angle. Um, after that, I'll grab my jointer plane and uh, join those edges as perfectly as possible so I don't introduce any tension when I glue up. Uh, if my doors end up potato chipping after the clamps come off, the project is already done before it's even pretty much started. To shape the door, I make a template and just scribe those lines on um, each end of the door. And then I take my hand planes and start planing, uh, planing the door down to those lines. To plane the inside of the door, uh, I use a coopering plane. Uh, it's a plane with a curved bottom that allows me to plane the concave shape of the inside of that door. The cases joined together with dowels. Uh, I made this jig that works with the sides and the top and the bottom. I figured the best way to make the door uh, was to make it all as one piece and then cut it down the center because uh, it's going to be a double door uh, cabinet and instead of wrangling two separate doors and trying to get them perfect I figured yeah let's just make it all as one and then cut it down the center and it worked out. The doors need to nest into each other when closed, and to accomplish that I need to rabbit the edge where they both meet. Uh, I actually ended up goofing this on the first try. I took a bit too much off uh, at once, and so I ended up gluing up a strip and uh, into that rabbit, and then uh, tried it again.
I'm using splines to join all the partitions. I like this technique because it allows me to glue the case up and then slide the partitions in from the back. Uh, to accomplish this, the setup has to be dead on though. Uh, I laid out the locations I needed around the grooves, then clamped the sides together in a mirror orientation, then used a square, a fence, and a trim router to run those grooves. In proper Cronop cabinet making form, I'll be using his flipper floppers to act as a latch for the doors. I salvaged a spring from a mechanical pencil. Uh, it helps the latch to keep pressure on the door when closed. Since there are two doors, I need one of the flipper floppers to have a heel, which prevents the doors from swinging in too far. The mortise these fit into need to be slightly loose so the latches can operate properly. Uh, to counteract the flipper floppers, I also need to install some levelers on the bottom of the cabinet. This prevents the door from sagging. Uh, to do that, I'll just draw out some holes now, and I'll install those little levelers later. They basically look like little buttons. At this point in the process, I'm almost ready to glue up. Before I do though, I need to give the sides a bit of curvature, shape the edge profile, and mortise the hinges.
The last step is to pre-finish the inside surfaces. Uh, for this, I'm gonna use Malort. No, I'm just kidding, I'm using shellac. Uh, I apply it and then burnish the surface uh, with shavings of the wood that I'm finishing. So I'm using, uh, I burnish the African mahogany interior uh, with African mahogany uh, wood shavings. Before I glue up though, I want to clamp the case together and apply wax at the corners. Uh, this prevents any glue squeeze out from sticking to the surface. Uh, once I apply glue and clamp it, I check for square using a couple sticks and adjust my clamps as necessary. With the case glued up, I can start to fit the partitions. I use my shooting board to sneak up on the proper fit, and after I fit all the proper partitions, I can route a stopped groove in the ends to accept the splines. Before I can glue the horizontal partitions in, I need to lay out and route the grooves for the vertical ones. For this, I use a story stick referencing off of one side of the case and use the same technique as before to route the grooves. After final services, softening edges, and applying shellac, I'm ready to glue in the horizontal partitions. I like this technique because I can take my time with it. It's pretty uneventful. I can glue them all at once, or a few at a time. It doesn't matter. After the horizontal partitions are glued, glued in, I can start to fit the vertical ones and repeat the whole process. Now that the partitions are glued up into the case, I can get to work on the back panel. I start by scoring up the corners of the rabbit in the back. I get my dimensions for the back frame by referencing off the rabbit in the back. I'm using African mahogany for the frame and this big wide board of redwood for the floating panel. Uh, this board is a bit too large to send over my joiner, so I knocked on the high corners and send this big boy through the planer uh, to thickness it down to the right dimension.
And to join all the components together, I'm just going to use uh, slip tenons. So at this point you're probably noticing this panel looks a bit thin. Uh, that's because it is. Uh, I didn't rabbit the, the groove or the rabbit in the back deep enough and so it's only actually about a quarter inch. And because it's so thin I can't mortise any hardware in the back with the screws um, to hang this cabinet from. So that opening in the framing panel that you see, uh, that's going to house a cleat. That's going to be fastened to the wall and the cabinet will sit in that cleat. To fit the back panel, I start by planing down the top and the bottom to fit. Uh, I also introduce a slight bevel on the edge to allow the panel to slide into the back just like a bit more easily. Uh, once it fits nice and snug, I'll apply some shellac and finish it and then it's time to glue it up. Now that everything's been glued up, I can start the final fit of the doors. Uh, initially I got the doors closed, but as I glued up components, you know, dimensions will inevitably change. Uh, so now that everything's in place, I can do the final fitting and plane down surfaces that might have moved or warped. Um, after I get the door snugly into the opening, I can start to carefully mortise the hinges.
Once the doors are where I want them to be, I lay out for the poles made from African blackwood. I'm using a through wedge tenon uh, to join them to the doors, so I rod a mortise to accept the tenon. When I make door poles, I like to just start with a rough shape and let it evolve. Uh, I cut them out on the bandsaw and then use a knife and gouge to shape and add texture. The next process is to install the door levelers and flipper floppers. Uh, I drilled some quarter inch holes in the cabinet bottom prior to the case being glued up. Uh, I shaped some black wood to fit into those holes and just glued them in. Uh, once they're in, uh, I leave them proud and then I take them down with a file and then the, until the door just barely scrapes the top of the leveler. Uh, this ensures that the downward force created by the flipper flopper will be counteracted by the leveler and prevent any door sagging. Uh, with the leveler set, I can install the flipper floppers um, I had carved them oversized and now can bring them down so that the doors will close easily but still have some pressure being exerted on them. The last thing to do is to make 30 dovetail drawers. I'm using Ebon R for the fronts, basswood for the sides and back, and then some cheapo plywood for the bottoms. I keep the front and the backs wider than the opening, 
but fit them snugly into the pocket, top and bottom. And same with the sides. Snug fit, top to bottom. With the components all roughly fit, I can start to mark my pins for half-blind dovetails. Um, I know there's a whole thing, pins or tails first, whatever I do, I'm doing pins first, that's just how I was taught. Um, I scribe my lines and then mark my pins. Uh, once that's set, I can take all my fronts and route out most of the waste. With so many components to keep track of, it's, it's really imperative to mark all of my components properly and orient them properly. Um, if I make a mistake in the beginning, it's just going to be transferred to 30 other drawers. And so luckily I avoided that, but I was nervous about that pretty much the entire time. For the drawer pulls, I'm using a simple hole bored into the top of the drawer front and then using the edges with some sandpaper glued to a dowel that I chucked into my drill press.
With the drawers glued up, I can start to fit them. I'll flush out the joints, then plane the sides until I get the fit that I want. I'm looking for some resistance, but not so much that I'll pull a cabinet off the wall to get a drawer out. With all the drawers fit, I can now ease all the edges, and then after that, I'll apply shellac. This project was something that I'd wanted to build for a while. Um, I'll be using it to store hardware and fasteners in my shop. I like to think of it as a really nice utilitarian piece. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching everyone. Uh, I really appreciate it. Take care.